Hey. Uh. Good afternoon. Uh. Praise the Lord. I wanted to get on here and um share my testimony on how uh I got saved. And uh I'm trying not to make it too long, but it, the Lord has done so much for me and I'm gonna try to condense it and and I hope my testimony uh reaches somebody that will in turn prick their hearts and draw them to the Lord that they may surrender to the Lord and be saved. So before I start, uh, I want to pray right quick. Uh, dear Lord, I pray that you are with me, uh, be in my words, lead and guide me, carry me, Lord, as I share your wonderful deeds to the world. And how you have moved in my life, how you have saved my soul, and how I know you intimately and how we're growing our relationship. And I pray that you from this video, you will all get glory and someone else will get saved for the glory of your name. Father, in your precious son, Jesus the Christ's name, amen. All right, look. <laughs> all right, man, let me check out. Okay, uh, man, where can I start? Um, I'll start, you know, uh, growing up, I always knew it was, there was God, I knew God was Jesus, you know, from uh, family members. Uh, I wasn't raised in church growing up, but, you know, I went to the typical Easter service. That's probably about it growing up. Uh, um, uh, where's my baby? Hold on. Can't I'm trying to be the star. Okay, sorry about that. My, my beautiful baby girl started crying. But I was trying to make my testimony video. She a testimony too. But uh, um, yeah, like it's, it, like God started dealing with me in my teenage years uh, when I was a freshman in high school. Um. But just for some odd reason, you know, I would go throughout my house just doing regular stuff on any given day. But I would, um, out of the blue, I would just start being, you know, interested in the Bible. And I will always go to the last book, Revelation. And, um, you know, I would read what's, what's to come. And, you know, then I'll start reading Proverbs and Genesis. You know, it, he was just... He was just drawing me, uh, but in high school, I got around the wrong crowd, and God, I you know I pushed God out of my life. Um, I remember going out when I was in high school, you know, we would be smoking blunts, you know, and, you know, just hitting routes, just driving around smoking, and every time I pass the church, I would have enough sense, you know, to repent, you know, I'd say, oh, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for smoking, you know. I always had that knowing that, you know, God was real, Jesus was Lord, but I was deceived, too, from John 3.16. I just thought, as long as I believed in him, that I was saved and I was okay, and uh, clearly I was deceived and I was in the wrong, but um, I didn't know that then, and uh, fast forward, uh, graduate high school, you know, in the midst of high school, you know, you, um, like I said, smoking, drinking, fornicating, uh, quote unquote, gotten blood, you know, just, just, you know, doing stuff, man, and, uh, you know, start selling drugs, uh, start selling weed, started off with a quarter, then I went all the way up to you know, quarter is the is the one of the smallest quantities. It's like thirty dollars, and I got up to quarter pounds. You know, I was you know just going deeper in sin, and um, around that time, you know, I'm guys getting tattoos and all that. You know, uh, it was my first one in the middle. I'm not trying to show my chest, but it's the first one in the middle. 
Uh, the quote unquote blood tattoo with the clown faces and the hundred dollar bills. And uh, I started going to college, and um, in the course of college, guys start back dealing with me. Uh, my girlfriend at the current time, we, we was together through high school, through like 11th grade. And uh, she got invited to a church function. And uh, uh, she went, her little sister went, and her mom went. And the first day, they, they, the, first day the first day that they went to church, the Lord saved them. So, you know, I'm still out in the streets, you know, still drug dealing and smoking, just in that lifestyle. And, uh, you know, we was fornicating up to that point. So, you know, she came, like, after a couple of weeks, you know, I know she, you know, she was going to church and Bible study, you know, and uh, she came, uh, she came to me one one afternoon, you know, she was like, Devin, uh, I've been going to church and Bible study, you know, I can't remember the exact word, she was like, uh, we have to stop doing what we're doing. And I was playing a game, I was playing the PlayStation, so I was listening, but I wasn't listening. She was like, we have to stop doing what we're doing. And I'm like, what? What you talking about? I'm still playing the game. She was like, fornicating. I was like, fornicating? What's that? And she was like, you got to stop having sex. <laughs> when I pressed the pause button so quick on the game. <laughs> and I was like, what? And she was like, yeah, you got to stop fornicating. I was like, I was like, fornicating? I was like, what you talking about? She said, you got to stop having sex. I said, man, you, man, you can go ahead and get your stuff and go. And that's what I told her, you know, and she left, <laughs> you know, she, uh, she had fell in love, you know, with the Lord and her relationship was that strong with him that she was willing to give me up for him, you know, so I'm, I'm big and bad, you know, so I'm still doing my thing, still selling weed, still going around trying to hit, you know, have, have sex with all these girls and, uh, I don't know, a couple of weeks went by, like, I start feeling lonely, you know, so I was like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit it back up, you know, I'm going to call, I'm going to go, I'm going to go to Bible study with her, you know, as I, I said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to act like I'm trying to get it right, but I'm just trying to get her back, I'm going to go ahead and pull her back, so uh, I remember that day, my homeboy came over there in his Chevy, on uh, 28 inch rims, you know, we was doing our thing, man, <laughs> on 28 inch rims, you know, we was rolling up, and uh, we was smoking, and uh, he was like, where you finna go, I said, man, I'm finna go to Bobster, he said, Bobster, I said, yeah, man, I'm finna, I'm finna go with Ash, just, you know, make her feel like, you know, I'm trying to do something, so, 90% uh, of me was going, you know, just to play her with the 10%, you know, I did kind of want to go, you know, but, uh, you know, so I, I smoked, got high, rolled over there to where Bible study was. Man, when I tell y'all, I went in there high, and when I came out, my high was gone. God sweated all that out. I'm talking about, hey, I went in there, they, I never forget it. It was in the book of Matthew, and that was in a chapter about, uh, when, when the Lord Jesus was talking about Pharisees and um, marriage, uh, I can't remember what chapter. I got my Bible right here, but I got I got my daughter, and I'm, and I'm trying to put her down. She'll start crying. But uh, it was in Matthew some of my marriage, it was some of my fornication, my adultery, and you know for some odd reason, you know we, they was talking about it. And, you know after I introduced myself, you know. You know, the the teacher asked the class to the, uh, she had asked the question to the class, and she was like, anybody know what fornication is? And, you know, I know it from secondhand what my girlfriend told me. You know, I, you know, and that's the whole time, I'm like, I'm like still high. So, uh, she asked me, she was like, uh, David, do you know what fornication is, man? I tell you, I started sweating so hard, man. <laughs> my stomach got in knots, and I was like, nah, I don't know what it means. And, you know, she had gave the, uh, she had gave the, she gave the definition and whatnot, and, uh, you know, she went to that scripture in Corinthians when Paul was saying, you know, it's better to marry than burn with lust. And uh, from that first Bible study meeting, that's all she wrote. You know, the Lord started dealing with me about.
about giving my life to him. Uh, and over the course, after that, I was going to Bible study every week. And then like three months later, I started going to church with him on Sundays. But in that course, God was still dealing with me on giving my life to him. And um, I remember leaving those Bible studies, having people waiting in front of my house, waiting for weed, you know, waiting for drugs. And uh, I remember leaving Bible study, putting on my Gucci man and Boosie. I remember leaving Bible study, still smoking. You know, over the course of those months, I was like, man, something got stopped. Because I, I feel like a, uh, the fakest person. I feel like the, the I feel like a four, because what we used to call folks who was fake a four. I felt like a hypocrite. You know, I'm going to Bible study. I was enjoying Bible study. I was loving it, but I was still doing this when I was leaving Bible study. And every day, throughout the whole week. So, uh, you know, uh, uh, I had... Uh, I had two, I had two zones left on weed, and one of the guys who I used to sell weed to lived in front of my house, and I was like, man, I just love Bible study, dude. I said, man, this man had to stop, I'm finna flush, I'm finna, I'm finna flush all this stuff down the uh, toilet, all this weed down the toilet. He was like, what? No, nah, don't flush it. Give it to me. You know, he was like, give it to me, man. Give it to me. I was like, nah, man. I said, man, if somebody don't call for these two zones right now, I'm finna flush it. And as soon as I said that, man, somebody called me. They was like, man, you got two zones, man. I need it real bad. Man, that has scared me so bad because uh, I was saying I wanted to flush it, but I really didn't want to flush it. And, you know, um, I, I I really do believe that there was Satan speaking through somebody. Uh, I probably, I believe I would have got robbed that night, uh, shot, you know, killed, you know, just for them two zones. But, you know, I said, no, nah, I told the dude, no, nah, I ain't had two zones. And the guy who was who I was in the car with, who was who was trying to buy weed, who was saying don't throw or flush the weed, give it to me. He wanted some weed that was worth twenty dollars, and I just gave it to him. I ain't even want the money. And uh, that's when you know the Lord started. He kept on dealing with me, man. And uh, over the course of that month, you know, I was still selling. Like I was like like halfway. Like I was still selling weed, and the weed I had left, I like flush a little bit day by day. And uh. I remember the the uh, I remember be before I flushed all the weed away, the uh, the weed man stayed around the street for me. So we was over there rolling up weed, you know. I'm like I'm 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 like convicted still. I'm like rolling up this blunt, finna smoke it. And he said, "Hey man, I'm finna put this movie on. It's called Devil." I'm like, "Devil." I'm like, "Man, I ain't put it in." So uh, it come on. The first scene of the movie, bruh, ma'am, whoever may be watching, the first scene of the movie, it was a scripture from Peter. Uh, I think it's first Peter or second Peter. Uh, you know, uh, I'm rolling it up. I just, I lit it and I just inhaled. The verse came up on the screen. Be vigilant, be sober. For the devil, your adversary, you know, rolls around like a lion seeking whom he may devour. Man, y'all talk about man, oh, man, hey. Oh, I said, man, I blew that smoke out so quick. I left, man, I gave him the blunder. They was like, what you doing, man? I said, man, I gotta go. I gotta go, dog. You know, they laughing at me. They think I'm freaking out, but I knew that there was the Lord dealing with me because he had giving me so many warnings prior to that. So I, I went home that night, you know, I went to sleep, you know, and the next morning I woke up, so I come on my phone for some weed, man. And I was like, I can't do this no more. And that's when I flushed all the weed I had left. And it it wasn't much, but it, it it was it was the sign that I you know, the Lord knew that I had, you know, gave that area of my life to him. You know, I started going to church after that, uh, still going to Bible study, and then 2011, uh, June 24th, Father's Day, I gave my life to the Lord. Uh, very special day to me was on Father's Day, and then on October 29th, 21st, I got, I got baptized, and, uh, from there on out, it's been a journey, man. Uh, over the course of, of uh, 
from 2011 to 2014, me and my wife got serious about the uh, Lord, well, my girlfriend, then she was still my girlfriend, then we got serious about the Lord, uh, you know, uh, we were reading and praying together, but we were still fornicating, you know, that, uh, that, that sin is so strong, you can't beat it in your own power, and we thought we could, you know, we were reading and praying together, you know, we would feel good, but as, you know, the day went on, the night went on, we'll be to, together late at night, and you put yourself in that position, you're going to fall, and we fail every time. You know, sometimes we would be in that position, and we would run, we would flee from fornication, but sometimes we didn't. And every time we sin, I feel awful, man. Like, I, I, felt, I felt angry. I got tired of repenting for the same thing, and I was like, man, someone had to give, had to do something. And the scripture, it's better to marry than to burn with lust. And, uh, I, you know, I told her, you know, if we don't get married or, or you know, start going this in the right direction and getting married, I'm going to stop seeing you because I'm, I'm getting tired of sinning against my Lord. And I can't keep saying I love you because every time I sin with you, I'm showing you that I don't because fornication ain't love, man. It's lust. So, you know, we start going, we start getting marriage counseling. We didn't have no money. You know, uh, I start saving money in June, and uh, by the end of August, what we had like a thousand dollars just for me. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, we didn't know where we was gonna move to, what apartment we was gonna go to. You know, people was it was people was telling us y'all too young do X Y Z. It was like, nah, man, uh, we're living for God. Uh, each step we took to obey the Lord, the Lord provided the next step for our feet to step on. So it was a process. Each step was a process, and each step, each step we was learning trust to trust in God. And uh, uh, 2014, September 13th, they tied a knot. We got married in holy matrimony. And uh, that was a monumental day in my life and, and my journey with the Lord. And for, you know, hers too, you know, uh, we got saved. And, man, I'm just, now I think about, I'm just leaving out so much stuff. The Lord has done so much. Oh, yeah, let me backtrack. When we was fornicating, when we was like, okay, we can't be around each other after, like, a certain time when it was dark because, you know, Ain't nothing open past 12 except for legs and crystals. <laughs> so, you know, uh, we stopped doing that. And we stopped fornicating with me uh, being deceived. Uh, I think I've, I've watched porn since I was like 13. Uh, probably a little bit younger than that. And uh, when I started fornicating, porn went away. When I was in high school, you know, when I when I started having sex, I, I stopped watching porn because I ain't had no need to. But you know, as we got me, and my wife, my girlfriend, and got sister with the Lord, we stopped fornicating. Porn came back, you know, that demon came back. You know, I got uh, I got addicted to porn all over again, and uh, you know, the thing is, me man, I was in bondage, and uh, my wife didn't know I was addicted to porn. My, my girlfriend then didn't know I was addicted to porn. And uh, one night, she had a dream. Like, after we got serious, that's when the Lord started giving us buku dreams, you know. Uh, dreams about getting ourselves right. Dreams about uh, going out to the harvest. Uh, saving people. Spreading the gospel. Casting out demons. All that, man, and in, in the midst of all that, she had a dream about me. It was a night that I had watched porn, and mind you, this is the second one. Let me tell you the first one that I got from the Lord about porn. I was in my church at a Saturday prayer meeting, Saturday morning prayer meeting. We was the, the uh, pastor's wife was there praying, and I had watched porn that Friday night. She was up there praying. She started getting, you know, the Lord started giving her a word of wisdom and knowledge, and she was like, the, those who are in here who are struggling with uh, masturbation and porn, the Lord is telling you, stop doing it. 
you know, this is a warning, you know, all of that, you know, so that was the first one, and that shook, shook the crap out of me, because then nobody know in that church that I was watching for, except for, you know, God, you know, God and Satan, that was the first one, the second one was my, my girlfriend had the dream about me, um, some months after that, that's how that strong that bondage was, I heard that warning, but I kept on far taking of that sin, and, uh, they used to be in the wiggle worm. You kept on partaking of this sin. I'm gonna wrap you up. And uh I kept on partaking of this sin. Can't remember what day it was, but that night I had watched porn and the following morning my my girlfriend had called me. She was like, I had a dream about you last night. I was like, really what? She was like, I had a dream that you had a lust thing and you was going around raping people. I was like, What? You know, inside, I'm like, shook. I'm talking about, like, knees quaking, legs shaking, stomach aching. I'm talking about, like, I was scared, but I was trying to act nonchalant about it on the phone. She was like, yeah, I had a dream about you. You know, you had a, a lust demon. You was going around raping people. I was like, hmm, I don't know why. I don't know why you had that dream. But after that, I said, no more. You know, I surrendered, you know, I, man, I, I got on my knees, I surrendered, uh, every day after that, I depended on the Lord, and he delivered me, man, he delivered me from porn, thank you, Lord Jesus, to the glory of the Father, and for anybody out there who's struggling with any sin, porn, <sighs> masturbation, fornication, smoking, homosexuality, fast money, uh, and, you know, strippers, uh, gambling, still in line, man. He can deliver you from that, man. And uh, what rose my faith as I was seeking him to be delivered, if God can create the heavens and earth, can hang the earth on nothing, surely he can deliver me from porn. You know what I'm saying? If he can do all that, he can deliver me. And he did. You know, you had the, the, the powers in his word and trusting in his word and submitting to his word and obeying his word. So uh, I pray that they help somebody. But, uh, you know, like I said, 2014, my, my girlfriend and I got married. And it's 2017, you know, three years passed by. And uh, it's been a journey. It's been a blessing. It's been learning curves. Uh, it's been growth. Growing pains, uh, learning on how to be uh, a father, learning on how to be a husband, learning how to be a man of God, learning how to be the head of my household. Uh, but the Lord has guided me. He's been right here at my right hand, how David said, the, the Lord is my right hand, and I'll never be shaken. And uh, I, I, I bless the Lord, man, because... You know, he he is so good and wonderful, and that's why I'm on here giving my testimony. And it's in 21 minutes right now. I, I left out so much, man. God has done so much for me. But uh, I think I believe I condensed it enough where I hit enough head, enough nail on the heads for people to realize that uh, Jesus Christ is real. Uh, it's 2017. Wiggle worm, baby. Sorry, y'all. Hold on. She's, man, she's a wiggle worm. Come on, baby. Uh, it's 2017 for a reason. Uh, yeah, he just say he ain't real, but it's it's 2017 for a reason. His his entrance out of heaven to earth was so powerful, they had to restart time. <laughs> they was like, man, man, God came down, man. We got to start time all back over. And then that's when they made BC and AD. You know, that was like, so of course God is real, man. Jesus Christ is the only way. He's the truth. He's the door. He's the life. And uh, if you're in any other religion, uh, I want to tell you right now that Jesus Christ is Lord. Uh, he's the Messiah. Uh, he's real. Give your life to him. 
out of all religions in the world, he's the only God that comes to live in his, inside of his people. And, uh, I pray this video helps somebody. Uh, maybe I try to do another one when uh, uh, I'm not I'm not occupied. <laughs> and uh, praise the Lord. And uh, that's it, man. Uh, time is running out, and that's why I feel led to put this testimony video on here. Any way that I can uh, spread the gospel, uh, plant a seed. Uh, Water to see you need me in any role I play in God's harvest. I'm grateful for it because I was a sinner and He saved me. And I hope that you find the many blessings and fulfillment in Christ as I did. He died for us when we were still sinners. <laughs> no greater love, man. So, uh, I pray that you're encouraged. Uh, pray that you got something from it, and I'm finna stop because I think I'm talking too much. So um, y'all have a good day. Praise the Lord. And I'm finna trying to put my my wiggle worn daughter to sleep. Uh, amen. So shall it be. Praise the Lord. Oh yeah, I'm gonna post some some pictures of me before I got saved and after I got saved because man, God did a wonderful work. Uh, Behold, old things pass away. Behold, all things have become new. And he and he still transformed me to his image. But it's evident that when I gave my life to the Lord, it was a change. My appetite changed. My my thought changed. My thought process changed. I had a I had a new inlook and I had a new outlook. Everything changed, man. So uh Hey man, I pray to get this help someone. See y'all later. Now with my back against the wall, I went to my creator. Jesus. Then dude pulled the trigger, but the gun clicked. His partner said, let me shoot him. He took the gun and he aimed it. So I know. Spirit home run, Derek Zeta. God, I know that it ain't hard to reach. Uh, that why I done been through so much in my life that I be praying on my knees. Like, love, forgive me, please. All I wanna do is live my life so I won't live in high degrees. Oh, love, forgive me, please. Stayed up in that jungle with my partners, we were trapping all the trees. So, love, forgive me, please. It be the realest song I ever wrote It be the realest song I ever wrote All of my life, all of the sins I have committed I know that my deeds 